What happened when the lion ate a clown? He felt funny. Hello everyone. I hope you're all well. Our theme for this half term, if you remember, is hope. H-O-P-E, hope. The belief that what you want can be achieved. If you remember, there were three things that we talked about to do with hope. First of all, you have to have a goal or a vision that you're working towards. And then you have to have that confidence to go for that goal. You also need to remember that you may need to take different pathways. You may come across obstacles that get in your way, but you have to endure, be determined, be resilient in order to achieve your goal. Last week, if you remember, we read Hamilton's Hats and we learned from Hamilton that you can strengthen your sense of hope by having different experiences in life. So Hamilton learned to be determined and brave and patient and kind. In this week's story, our main character uses confidence as a way of strengthening his hope. The lion inside. In a dry, dusty place where the sand sparkled gold stood a mighty flat rock, all craggy and old. And under that rock, in a tiny full house, lived the littlest, quietest, meekest brown mouse. He was so very tiny, so incredibly small, that nobody noticed him ever at all. He got trod on and sat on and missed out of stuff. Ignored and forgotten. Yes, mouse life was tough. Meanwhile, far above, on top of the rock, times were quite different. It was lion o'clock. This huge, toothsome creature made sure everyone saw how important he was and how loud he could. He was head of the pack. He was shouty and tough. He loved showing the crowd. He was made of strong stuff. Yes, all were impressed by this mighty king cat. If only, thought Mouse, I could be more like that. Then late one dark night, in his mini mouse bed, the cleverest thought popped into his head. He jumped from the covers and held up a paw. I've got it, he said. What I need is a roar. I mean, what if this mouse with the weeniest squeak was a little more grrr and a little less meek? Well, he'd still be the smallest of fuzzy brown mice, but he'd make friends and join in and life would be nice. So he made himself brave and he thought like a winner. He set off for the top, hoping not to be dinner. It felt like the scariest thing he could do but if you want things to change, you first have to change you. The further he climbed, the closer he got to the slumbering lion reclining on top. Then at last, as he stood on his tippity toes, he found himself suddenly nose to nose. <clears throat> Pardon me. Wake up, Mr. Lion. You've got company. Um, squeak, Mr. Lion. What I've come to you for is squeak. Do you think you could teach me 
to roar. A silence befell the twinkling plain. Lion opened his eyes and puffed out his mane. Time slowed right down. Why, it felt like a week. Then he opened his mouth and let out a... The lion was shaking, his paws all a fumble. He was backing away with a scrambling tumble. Don't hurt me, he whispered. Oh, try to be nice. Well, my goodness, this lion was frightened of mice. Don't worry, Mouse peeped. I'm a friend, not a foe. Let's rock this together. We'll have fun, don't you know? That was a magical moment for sure, when Mouse didn't feel at all small anymore. He had found his true voice and learned to speak out. And for that, you don't need to roar or to shout. And from that day and always, the two were a pair. They both liked that rock better, now that rock was to share. The mouse, while still little, felt big in his head. And the lion, he still roared, but with laughter instead. Yes, that day they both learned that no matter your size, we all have a mouse and a lion inside. In that story, Mouse had a very clear goal. Mouse wanted to find his voice, his voice inside. He decided on a pathway. It was that he was going to learn from the lion. But actually, in the end, he found a completely different pathway. And that was through his friendship with lion. He knew what he wanted to achieve and he had the confidence, despite the fact that he was just a tiny little mouse, he found the confidence to go along his pathway and go for his goal. I want you to spend our reflection time thinking about the things that perhaps you've already got inside that could help you to achieve your goal. Let's reflect. This is Pantasaurus. He's going to help us with our song about pants. What's in your pants belongs only to you. Your pants cover up your private parts. Your private parts belong only to you. If someone asks to speak, just tell them no. Pantasaurus likes to wear his pants, he wears them all day long. They cover up his private parts, and that's what makes him strong. If someone asks to see or tries to touch him underneath them, he tells them no, then tells someone he trusts and likes to speak to. What's in your pants belongs only to you. Your pants cover up your private parts. Your private parts belong only to you. If someone asks to see, just tell them no. If someone asks to see or tries to touch under your pants and says to keep it secret, then you must tell them no. Then go and find someone you trust and tell them straight away. They'll say well done for speaking out and make everything okay. What's in your pants belongs only to you. Your pants cover up your private parts. Your private